feature presentation. Welcome back to another Untitled Sundance 2023 review. I am one of your hosts, Matt Rohrbeck, alongside, he's allergic to tomatoes, but he is tomato meter approved, Eric Marchin. Hey, Matt. It's uh, our first day of recording for Sundance, and already it kind of feels like we've been here forever. (laughs) <laughs> yeah we had to record a bunch of stuff so yeah um uh, we are covering all of uh 2023 sundance not all of that would be impossible but as much as eric and i can watch in the next uh what seems like a week but more seems like five to six days and we have four five six seven movies log or logged per day but we're trying to watch three to four but um we mentioned this on the first show which you guys uh, uh can check out we reviewed uh fair play um, which is on all podcast services now for you guys to check out. Um, but we are trying to do these quick, uh, trying to do these as like first impressions. Should this be on your radar um, whenever it comes out later in the year or next year? Um, but yeah, I'm kind of in that loopy stage already of a festival where you're watching three to four movies per day. You're trying to kind of align them all and get your thoughts lined up and do this professionally. But I'm, uh, we're also talking Oscar nominations over on the Untitled Movie uh, Podcast. You guys can check that out. We're also doing Last of Us shows called The Cast of Us, where we're breaking down every scene from every episode of The Last of Us. So there's just a lot going on. Uh, you got a family trip coming up. I do. That's vacation's great. I'm excited for that. But, um, you know, January usually sort of slow, right? So we fill it up with other things and we've, uh, you know, we always, we're only two, two men, Eric, but, um, I'm ready to fucking talk about some movies today. We are reviewing Elijah Bynum's, uh, magazine dreams starring Jonathan majors, uh, which, uh, he has, a he is major in this uh absolutely uh but yeah eric you you already hinted towards it how you you feeling loopy too or what's up bro yeah i mean i'm still excited to do this and and we're both very you know lucky to be you know covering the virtual side of sundance and so you know you never want to take that for granted it's just you know it's it's a lot for two people and and when i say two people mostly you because matt does a lot of the back end of of kind of the editing and post-production so no one gives um, a shit let's talk this <laughs> okay, so so with this, it's it's going to be interesting because I think you know Jonathan Majors, one of the best actors working uh, right now, and you know since um, for I think for a lot of people, uh, the first film that drew you know attention uh, to him as an actor was a Sundance movie, which was The Last Black Man in San Francisco uh, a few friend. years ago, and and an amazing performance. And and before that, he had been doing really great character work in smaller roles, like in uh, White Boy Rick and in Hostels. Um, but now he's kind of become more of a, a major movie star because of his role, um, his ongoing role in uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And then also with Last really, Man it's just Ocean. been like one one scene so far. But yeah, he has Ant-Man and the Wasp Mania coming up in a couple of weeks. Yeah. And Creed 3 and, yeah. and his his Creed 3 physicality. I, I wonder if he did shoot magazine dreams around the same time as creed he Three, must or have he, right he shot them yeah. back to back or at the same time because it does feel like the physicality of this guy's performance of, of jonathan major's performance is incredible it, it's one of those things where it's like it's you wild don't know how you could keep this up and and we'll go more into it in, in a second but like you you watch scenes where like he's at these bodybuilder competitions and usually when you have an actor working alongside alongside like actual, actual bodybuilders and stuff or professionals yeah. in, in any Athletes, capacity yeah, anything, yeah. yeah they usually stand out and that doesn't mean that the performance is bad or even the work that they did physically to train to become you know uh, as as sort of i guess swole as they possibly can be um it, it's always still telling because it's like you, you see the real person versus you know the actor uh in this case it's like the, the the I mean, just that physical quality alone is incredible, but the emotional performance is very strong. And, and so I think we'll be talking a lot about that. And um, 
with that, I think, you know, if you wanted to read the plot synopsis, we can kind of dive in. Yeah. So what we're doing, we're just trying to give you guys a brief synopsis that I get from IMDb. So you guys can have an idea of what the movie's about, because a lot of these movies you won't be able to see for quite some time. They're indie films or they're smaller films. Some movies have studios already with them and some are getting purchased as the festival go on. So Magazine Dreams is about a black amateur bodybuilder who struggles to find human connection in this exploration of celebrity and violence very you know simple description of what this movie is there's a lot more to it but um just so you guys have an idea and you can see the photo that sundance has released which is jonathan majors uh in a uh a, a speedo just looking absolutely jacked <laughs> just absolutely jacked and i agree with you eric where he must have done the Marvel stuff, the Creed stuff in this movie kind of back to back to back just to kind of, you know, it'd be impossible to keep up this shape. I would, I would assume unless you do this for a living, like a lot of the people that they showcase uh, in this movie. But I'll, I'll kick it back over to you. Uh, yeah. What did you think of Magazine Dreams? Well, Jonathan Major's muscular portrayal pumps up an uneven character study and this like this movie is Jonathan Majors. Like he is so good in this yeah. film that it's also easy to um, overlook some of the issues pertaining to mental health and uh, wellness and and how somebody on the edge is dealing with you know their own insecurities as a male but also as mm -hmm. someone who feels like they're disconnected from the rest of the world and it's interesting because the whole time i was watching this and and i did some research and tried to find specifically what his diagnosis was because the movie never really tells you directly what no. it is but the symptoms and this is this is coming from somebody that 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 is on the spectrum mm -hmm. is very much that of of autism and yes, absolutely. watching how the character defaults to the thing that he's most comfortable about talking about which is about bodybuilding and weight training and people within the industry but then also being having that stilted style of speech where you talk in a manner that is all facts or could come across as robotic and then mm -hmm. on top of that you also have moments where the character is trying to you know record you know these kind of promos YouTube video, or yeah. youtube videos of himself and every time he does it he has to stop and start at the beginning again and he frustrates himself and then he kind of you know tries to reorganize the set and then start again and once he gets to the final recording, he's just burnt himself out. And those things throughout kind of were the most relatable. And I think the work that Majors has done on a research level for that should also be commended. Having said that, I do think that the script can be a little bit, not exploitative, but misguided in how it sort of explores those avenues and pushing the character to the edge or to a breaking point where you know that if you've seen the kind of movies that this is emulating specifically, you know, taxi driver or nightcrawler, Dan Gilroy's a producer on this. Um, and, 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 you know, even Joker, you're waiting for yeah. that moment to occur where the <laughs> character blows up and how that's handled with mental health is, is a very tricky thing to get right when it comes to how characters are portrayed because then you also send a message out to the people watching it who not only you know are maybe on the autistic spectrum or or have you know a, a, a neurodiversity in some way but it's also mm -hmm. important to know that you know people watching this are going to think okay well this is how people always act or behave you know and and i think joker also deserved that same criticism where i think I you know, Todd agree, phillips yeah. didn't really handle it in a manner that was um respectful to the community i i think jonathan majors does i don't know if the filmmaking is entirely there i, I apologize for rambling on this this i just think that it was you're not rambling to, i think to, you mentioned and i appreciate what you bring to that because like i I definitely am with you a, a, a thousand percent on everything that you've said. I completely align with everything. I think Jonathan Majors um, 
is fantastic. He is a force in this movie. Like his physical performance, his just performance overall. Like I think he is very committed to the role. And I, I do agree that he is probably trying to be as respectful as he can based on the script that he's given. Um, and I don't think it's necessarily like some of those issues that you're talking about, you know, him taking a role that's not, you know, a lot of things happen in the edit and different things like that. Like who knows, but, um, yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you. I feel like his performance is, is what carries this movie and keeps you kind of, um, engaged with the material, um, and keeps you almost kind of cheering for the character because you know he's going through a lot even though if every decision he makes isn't necessarily um you know a great one and and i i kind of wish like you said the movie did sort of a better job at kind of the nuance of of mental illness and and maybe not even mental illness is the right word but just mental health and 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 how you um people should deal with that and the help that they can get from others and how people, whether it's police dealing with situations uh, with him or his family or others, and just like uh, his peers, uh, people online and things like that, like the way, what it pushes him to kind of do or think about is just like, not the way you sort of, and Joker, I think is very guilty of this as well. And I thought of Joker a lot while watching this movie. Um, and some of those other movies that you mentioned as well. Um, I think it's a, it, it's, you know, it's a sensitive area to play in and you want to make sure you do it right. And I'm not sure the movie does it right. Like, I don't know if it knows what it wants to say about that. And it's I, like where the story goes. And I, again, I don't want to give anything away or anything like that, but um, it goes to some really, really dark places. And um I wish there was a little bit more not I don't know how am I saying this like hopefulness or just nuance in in how you handle mel mental health in the movie that I was kind of like thought it was kind of questionable um and, and you spoke about about it very elegantly and I, I I totally agree with you um on like the stupid side of things I kept thinking of the Eminem song Stan and the music yep. video for Stan um because he writes to this bodybuilder throughout the movie and even some of the lines that he's writing to him feel ripped from uh that music video and that song um obviously eminem's not the first person to uh although that term standing did come sort of from that but um that obsessiveness over this one thing when you want to achieve when your dream is this one specific thing the magazine dream to get on a magazine um, and how that can kind of consume you in, in the dark places you go. Like there is something interesting there. And I think Jonathan majors does a fantastic job, but ultimately uh, it's a little messy in its portrayal of, of mental health where I think it ultimately suffers because of that. Yeah. And it, and it's also predictable in a way where again, you know, not that Paul Schrader owns the rights to this kind yeah. of story, but He's the one, and and with Scorsese as well, you know, who kind of really brought it to the forefront of of you know, in, in terms of commercial cinema. I mean, obviously Dreyer before that, and 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 you have other filmmakers that have played with with those kind of tools before. But the the kind of idea of the you know interspersed voiceover, um, giving you exposition about the character, but in a parasocial relationship with somebody else yeah. that they're talking to in a diary. I mean, this is the, you know, muscular man in a room writing and giving his confession in a way, the same way that we've seen that with, you know, Travis Bickle or the way that we've seen that with Ethan Hawke's character in first reformed. It's, 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 th there's, a, there's a certain formula to that. And this movie kind of covers that. And, and it also feels in a way that, it's trying to say everything and, and never really kind of committing to one sort of focus. Like yeah. this movie has multiple sequences where it, it almost feels like, okay, well we should have gone with, with this direction, but we're going to also have that. And then we're going to have this, and then we're going to have the character pass out, you know, this at this moment. And then they're going to, you know, wake up and in, in, get in a in, car accident here. They're going to go do this thing. And then it's going to fade to black. And then we're going to come back and then we're going to fade to black again because something else happened. And then we're going to come back and we're going to go to this other place. And like, I, I, I joked about it in my, in my tweet saying it had more endings than return of the King because the movie yeah. is, you know, it's two hours or over two hours. Um, and, 
that last it kind of loses steam right like it just uh you kind of understand where the movie is going but like you just mentioned eric like it's trying to cover so many different avenues of someone who's dealing um you know with the things that he's dealing with that it's like every fantasy or every you know uh, thing that goes through your head they need to kind of show you that without even kind of focusing on maybe one avenue and i just feel like the more it faded out and faded back in and showed you another scene and faded out and faded back in and um like by the end of it you sort of understand what they're doing um but i feel like maybe it's one or two things too much it's also just kind of lazy like it kind of feels like oh it's it's a quick way to reset or move the character from i hate to fade to blacks B. in movies i yeah. hate them <laughs> it, it, you know night and day i think uh, like in, in yes. recent memory is one that does it the worst and is the the the, the, the greatest offender of that kind of thing but again like it, it it kind of feels like the script couldn't choose what direction to go in so instead of picking somewhere to go it goes everywhere it goes it covers every basis in order to tell this story it, it depicts you know mental health and, and 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 wellness it depicts you know race it depicts violence it, it toxic masculinity like it, it covers all those things but it's not being specific enough and i think that there is a more specific conversation to have like even you know scenes with his therapist it's like it, you're, you're watching those sequences and you're thinking to yourself okay like again you know those are the the joker-esque scenes where like you're waiting for this character to go in a certain direction and then you're introduced to something that kind of feels weirdly uncomfortable and, and will probably be a big point of discourse but it's introduced again you know we're talking about fair play how late it comes into the game where it's like shouldn't you maybe introduce this a little bit earlier and, yeah. and like i kind of know where you're going because you've seen other movies that have done this as well again case in point taxi driver where it's like yeah. okay like you're waiting for that kind of big moment that explosion to happen and then you know some of the filmmaking is is stylish there's a a single take of 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 killian maddox the jonathan majors character you know going into um this uh, building for a competition after a you bodybuilding know, competition after he's beaten by a couple of uh, you know, yeah, uh, yeah George and Sons uh, painters. Um, Why they would have cousins. driven their own van over to beat the shit out of him, I don't know. <laughs> and that's the other thing as well. Like that's where the like the, some blatant. of the logic comes in, yeah. where like it's a response to Killian previously, you know, trashing the Trash, the, yeah. the, the, the the store. But it's like one you would have probably insurance. No one got hurt Two, yeah. uh, you know, after that he, he cuts himself and he, and he's driving around and he, he collapses. So wouldn't like police, like, like, uh, like cameras, some surveillance cameras, security uh -huh. cameras, or something or in that area or, or, or a witness uh, yeah. collaborate with like the police and tell him like, you know, maybe he should. There's a charged. couple of things where you're like, how, like there's a moment he goes into a performance he goes in and isn't really seen and then leaves and I will, I will yeah. leave it at that. And I also don't know how that, ha how that happens either. And you go, how much of this is actually happening? How much is not? And like, um, it, it, obviously some of it did cause they come back and beat him up in, in, in that one sequence. But like, yeah, it's, that's what you mean by handling race and, and, and there's even power dynamics and, and that parasocial relationship and how someone, uh, in a position of power can take advantage of someone. That's another thing that they throw in. And like, there's just, there's so much. Um, so it just ends up kind of, I don't know, like it, there is some good stuff in here and, and Jonathan majors is a lot of that. Um, but I think it just ultimately um, doesn't quite come together. Uh, I'm going to give the film a 2.5 or did I give it a two? Yeah. 2.5. Cause I think majors, almost propels it to being you know okay uh but i think it ultimately doesn't work and i do want to give a shout out to harriet sansom harris uh who with um licorice pizza and magazine dreams her just behind a desk talking to someone absolutely in close crushing up. it yeah yeah in close up it's almost the exact same shot from licorice pizza very different characters but um she's great yeah. in uh both of them and she was also great in werewolf by night yeah and a very and a very sympathetic performance as the therapist but again yeah it's 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 kind of riddled with cliches and also kind of 
predictable tropes of what you've seen in these kinds of movies. I think the best version of, of this more recently, the one that didn't get a lot of love, but the people that saw it really liked it, including the two of us is um, the novice. And I, I think like that yeah. film also deals with obsession and, and sort of being propelled to do something. You nailed it that, there. Yeah. That you're really like, maybe not even passionate about, but you feel that you need to, control it in a way or be dominant in this field in, in a manner that you know other people are, are writing you off and to have a voice yeah. and that movie like even just the sound design of that film uh, you know like it's it's more insular in its design probably. where major's performance like it, it is the film you know you're watching this and you're thinking to yourself okay man i wish the movie was on the same level uh as majors and it's it's not and it collapses under the sheer weight of just predictability and yeah it's just so long and it meanders and and you think to yourself it like, does meander oh, yeah let's let's tighten this thing up because like there's a great mo- yeah. there is a great movie here there is a really good I movie agree. here and it's just unfortunate and it's it's a two and a half out of five for me as well and it's it, like at first i gave it a three but the more i thought about it and and again mm-hmm. you know i don't want to diagnose the character because i don't know if it is you know on the autistic spectrum disorder because i think that's even... part of the problem though right like you kind of you don't necessarily have to spoon feed us everything but I but it's do taking feel symptoms like when from 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 yeah. mental illnesses and applying them to the character but never being specific enough to tell you what it is because if the filmmaker tells you what it is then they'll be held account- accountable to, yeah, for exactly. not portraying it properly so you can have a character that almost has those symptoms but then also the, the reason why i don't want to say that it is one because i couldn't find any information on it but i did find some reviews alluding to it but two you know the 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 therapist character does mention that you know like you've been hearing voices and usually that's associated with paranoid schizophrenia schizophrenia, you know and and so like again it's like be more specific don't try to cover just everything and even characters that were introduced into this movie that are kind of outside of, of of jonathan majors you're feeling like okay am i supposed to know who this person is or like or why am I being introduced to them now so late in the game? And some of the actors are notable in terms of like, you, you've seen them in other stuff like Taylor page who played Zola uh, has a, a brief cameo in this. Uh, Haley Bennett has a small role. who's kind of playing almost like the civil shepherd type character and taxi driver. It just kind of feels like, again, why cast kind of these notable names for such small roles that maybe aren't as impactful as they could be with someone who's an up and comer or somebody maybe that's not as well known, you know, and, and yeah. that kind of is distracting. Cause I really liked even the dynamic between him and his grandfather. And I felt like that yeah, yeah. was kind of basically put to the, the wayside for most of it. Agreed. Uh, did it get, has, does it have a distributor? Has it got picked up yet? No, it'll get picked up though. I mean, I think just like on Jonathan Majors' name alone, and he, he'll probably yeah. be nominated for, you know, some awards next year and he, and he deserves to be, I mean, he, he is great in the movie. It's just the film itself. Um, suffers because of you know following in the footsteps of all those other movies that i mentioned and not doing it in a way that kind of elevates the material or finds a a through line like i never felt that i i really knew this world and this character other than the performance itself agreed uh thank you all for listening or watching we really do appreciate it if you could drop us a thumbs up on youtube or just hit five stars or whatever you want to honestly rate our show on your podcast service of choice uh we would really appreciate that uh we have a new episode of the untitled movie podcast which you guys can go check out which is uh episode 134 where we talk about our reactions to the 95th oscars uh nominations so go check that out as well as the critics choice awards that just wrapped up uh we also have the cast of us our hbo last of us podcast uh first uh three episodes are up which considers uh the spoiler free review of the whole season as well as recaps and breakdowns of episodes one and two so you can get that on all podcast services and um on youtube as well Uh, All of our Sundance reviews will be right here on Untitled Movie Reviews and a one-stop shop for everything. Just go over to Letterboxd and find us at Untitled underscore Movies. Everything will be over there. Uh, As always, my name is Matt Rohrbeck. You can find more of my work around the internet, mostly at UntitledMoviePodcast.com. And you can follow me on all those social medias at Matt Rohrbeck. And I'm Eric March, and you can find more of my video reviews on RogersTV.com slash CinemaScene and on the social medias at EM6211. Until next time. Pump it up.
I have no muscles. Bye. <laughs>